What's up? My name is Technoba here for Troubleshoot and welcome back to another video. The time has come for me to reinstall Windows 11 on my laptop. And of course, I don't want to install the full version of Windows 11 that includes a whole bunch of bloatware. Instead, what I want to do is customize the Windows install before I even try and install it on my laptop, which will give you much greater control over removing certain features that you can't remove later on, etc, etc. What I'm going to teach you in this video is how you can customize a Windows install ISO that you can then burn onto a USB, a CD or anything like that and install yourself a fresh copy of Windows, completely legal, made by yourself and customized to your liking with a whole bunch less bloatware. You can make Windows faster, perform better, more reliably and of course, remove unnecessary features. This video is going to be rather long, so strap in and of course, if you don't understand anything, you can check the comments down below and see what other people are talking about. If I need to add anything, you'll find it in the description down below as well. Why would you want to go ahead and create a light version of Windows 11? Well, it really comes down to RAM usage. When you're running Windows with a whole bunch of bloatware on it, it will take up more RAM by default, leaving you less in your computer, which especially becomes important when you're running a computer with low RAM. This makes a huge difference. On top of this as well, with less running in the background, it means you can get higher FPS in games, better performance, etc. Everything is just a little bit faster and snappier. So with all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and begin. First of all, you'll need to download the Windows 11 ISO file from Microsoft's website. We'll be customizing this and later burning it to a USB or something like that. When you get to the Windows 11 download page here, simply scroll down and look for download Windows 11 disk image ISO. Select the drop down here, Windows 11, then download and by product language, choose your language of choice, in my case English, continue and you can download the 64-bit version here. You'll then be downloading a roughly 5 gigabyte ISO file and this of course depends on the speed of your internet. What you need to do is wait for this to complete. In the meanwhile, however, we can download the tool that we'll be using. The tool that we'll be using in this case is MSMG Toolkit. It's a simple, completely free tool that allows you to debloat Windows, customize it, add or remove features, etc, etc. We can even install updates before we install Windows 11, making life a lot easier, especially if you have a rather slow device. There are other tools out there such as NT Lite, which I've used in the past, that have a more user-friendly GUI. However, this tool is completely free and gives you access to a lot of features that you may not get in those other paid programs. Of course, there are free versions of other software, but they just don't seem to offer as many features as this one, unless you fork out some money. This video is going to stay completely free. So on this Major Geeks download page, simply click download now, and then the download should start almost immediately. This file is a .7z file, which is similar to a zip. However, you'll need to download and install 7zip to open it up. For this, you'll find a download link in the description down below for 7zip.org slash download. What you need to do here is look for Windows 64-bit and simply download it. Downloading either the EXE or MSI, do the same thing. Once you've gone through and installed it, you should be able to open the toolkit with 7zip. However, if you're not able to, you can right click followed by open with. Make sure that always use this to open 7z files is ticked. Click more apps, scroll down to the very bottom and then click look for another app on this PC. When this window pops up, navigate into 7zip and simply double click on 7zfm.exe in C program files 7zip. Then it should open up as such. All we have to do is make a new folder where we'll be extracting everything too. I'll call it msmg and drag everything out of the 7zip into this folder here. I simply use Control A to select everything and now that it's extracted, I can delete the download and open up the folder that we just extracted. Here's all of the msmg files. Having a look over at Chrome, my ISO download has finished as well. So I've placed it on my desktop as well. Now all we have to do is open up the msmg folder we just created and then open the dvd file here. As you can see, there's already a file here, but we can ignore this for now. What you need to do is move the ISO file into this folder here, then right click this ISO file, 7-zip, followed by extract here. Then all of the files from inside of the ISO will be extracted into this folder as such. Then you can delete the Windows 11 ISO file as such and head back a folder. Now simply look for start.cmd in the folder just outside of that, double click on it and when prompted for admin, click yes. When you see this window, 
hit A. You'll see some information about your computer. You can skip this. And now we get to the main menu of the MSMG program. Now, of course, this program may be a different version when you download it, so these options may move around. Just make sure to read the options and then press the key appropriate. They may be different to what I'm telling you in the video now. So to begin, hit one on your keyboard to open the source menu. Now, depending on where you got the ISO file, whether you downloaded it from Microsoft's website or you created it using the media creation tool, you'll have one of two file types. I'll hit seven, extract source from custom Windows ESD image. And if you see an error like this, don't worry, we just need to convert a file in the DVD sources folder. So DVD sources called install.wim to install.esd. They're two different file formats. For this, you'll find another program linked in the description down below. WinReducer ESD. So when you get to this page here, simply click download at author's site 64-bit and a zip download should then begin. When it downloads, open up the zip and extract the folder in here to somewhere like your desktop. We'll be deleting this later on. When you've done so, open up WinReducer ES Wim Converter 64.exe and click yes when prompted for admin. When you see this, click no as we won't be paying to activate it and after five seconds, the program should then open. After clicking yes on that little nag error there, we see this here. All you have to do here is click software installation and uncheck anything you see on this window here. So everything's set to off. Tick 7-zip, DISM, OSC, DIMG and set ACL at the top. All four of these elements up here, then click download. Then click OK, click No on the snag window once again, wait 5 seconds, and the main program will open up. Click Open at the very top, and navigate into this folder here, the MSMG folder that we extracted all the files to, DVD, then open Sources, and look for install.wim. If you used another file browser, click at the very top, copy the path, and paste it in here in this window, then hit Enter, or navigate across here manually. Then locate and double click on install.wim, wait for it to scan the file, then click wim to esd on the left hand side, and we can choose what edition we'd like. You can of course keep all of them if you'd like to install different versions, or you can select one of the options down here. Usually you'll pick Windows 11 Pro, but you can also pick Windows 11 Pro N, which is the normal Windows 11 install, but it's missing certain Windows Media Pack features, Windows Media Player, etc. Those are required for some games, but you can download them later on, so just be prepared if you do select Windows 11 Pro N. Because it does have a little bit less bloatware, and I don't use the Windows media features anyways, I can click this one here and continue. The rest of the options here we can all leave alone, then we can simply click Convert here. Now of course, depending on the speed of your drive, this will take some time, but as you can see, there's an ESD file that we're creating with this program, and it'll start filling up almost immediately. And once it's done, click OK, then exit in the bottom right, yes, and no on the nag window once again. Now, if you'd like, you can delete that WinReducer folder as we don't need it anymore. Checking back here, we have install.exd and install.wim. If you'd like, you can delete the bigger.wim file or you can leave it here. I'll be deleting it and clicking yes. I'm sending it to the recycle bin so I can get it later if I need it. So once again, MSMG and open up the program unless you still have it running. If you still have it running, press any key, back to source, and then seven once again for extract source from custom windows ESD image. Now you'll see the version that we selected earlier, or you'll see a list of different versions if you already had the ESD image. Select whichever one works for you, or of course, if you only have a one, press that number and enter to continue. Now it's simply going to extract the image and we'll be able to edit it in just a moment. When it's done, hit any key. You can hit seven, then one for WIM manager, and you can hit A to display all of the versions inside of here. Pressing any key, you can rename them with B or delete them with C. I'll hit X to back out of here and X to back out once more. Now we're back in the main menu. All we're going to do is hit one for source and then one once again for select source from DVD folder. Then hit one or the number that corresponds to the version you want to edit and then hit enter. When you ask whether you want to mount it, hit N for no and N once again. Then wait for it to finish mounting. When it's done, hit any key to continue and we're back in the main menu. I'll hit two for integration and inside of here we can customize windows. If you'd like to pre-install any Windows language packs or drivers here, you can add them to the packs folder over here, slash language packs, or you can put the drivers in the drivers folder here, 
install Windows 11 and X64 here. So as most people won't be using those, I'll leave them out. You can always add them later on. The Windows features over here allows you to install specific features that you can use later on, but I'd usually skip this as we can install these ourselves later. So I'll head back and head into Windows Updates. This is a useful one. Head across to catalog.update.microsoft.com and inside of here, in the search bar in the top right, we'll be searching for two things. First of all, search for servicing, stack update Windows 11 x64 and hit search. Then you'll see a bunch of responses here. Note that we searched for x64 specifically as we're not installing ARM64. Don't confuse the two. This is x64. Currently at the time of recording this, there isn't a surfacing stack update for Windows 11. However, at some stage in the future, there probably will be one. When there is one, if you're watching this further in the future, click download on the right hand side and then drop it into updates, Windows 11, x64 over here. The next one we're searching for is cumulative update Windows 11 x64. This one you should definitely find. Then look at the very top and you'll find something like this. It's sorted by date, so we're looking for the latest cumulative update for Windows 11 for x64 based systems as such. There are other ones here, though make sure you're not downloading 4.NET Framework or anything like that, it's just for x64 based systems. Click a download on the far right, and inside of the pop-up, click the link here, or if it doesn't work, drag it to a new tab in your browser. Then a download should begin. I'll then drag and drop the update into the same folder, updates Windows 11 x64 as such. Now I can hit Y to continue, then inside of here, hit 1 for integrate Windows updates, and wait for this to complete. It runs through all of the files in that folder that we downloaded and should install the updates. As you can see over here, this is the file that we downloaded just now. Then hit any key to continue and X to go back. Now we can head into three for remove and we can debload windows. There's a bunch of options here that we'll be going through one by one. First of all, remove windows components. Enter, select windows components and choose the things that you'd like to keep or remove. This of course will be different for you and what you need. But for example, we'll start with internet number one. All you have to do is deselect the options you don't care about. So for me, I'll unselect Edge Chromium Browser, and when it has a minus sign, that means it's not going to be installed. When it has a plus, that means it is going to be installed with Windows by default. You can hit A to toggle them all off, and turn them back on one by one by entering the number. Some features do require, say, the Edge Chromium Browser, and you may need to have this on. But for me, I'll turn it off and download it later if I need. Then, two for multimedia, you'll usually leave the first three on, first log on animation, game explorer, and speech recognition, and you can remove the rest if you like. So, Windows Media Player, Windows Photo Viewer, and System Assessment Tool. If you use the default Photo Viewer, you can turn this back on. Then hit back, and three for privacy. Now inside of here, you can choose what you want to keep. For me, I'll hit one to turn off absolutely everything, and there's certain options you may want to keep, such as face recognition, pin sign-in support, and the Wi-Fi network manager, Wi-Fi Sense. Other than that, you can usually leave everything here off. Then hit X for back. Now, remoting. In here, you can usually hit A to turn off everything and go back. Then, system. I'll hit 1 to deselect everything, as there's only a few things that I'd like to keep. For 1, manual setup, in place upgrade, system restore, which will then automatically select Windows backup as well, Windows firewall, and if you'd like, WordPad at the very end, but I don't use that. If you'd like to use Windows subsystem for Linux, you can select it here, or of course, you can install it later on. Because I'll be using it, I'll select it, though this is definitely not something you need. Then hit X to go back and head into System Apps. Now this list is rather long, so you may want to make the window a bit taller, or you can simply scroll up and down it. I'll turn off everything by hitting A, Enter, and now starting at the very top, there's some that you may want to keep, including the Content Delivery Manager, so I'll hit 09 and Enter, then the File Explorer app, 14, Enter, the Win32 Web View Host, 29, enter, Windows Store Backend Client, 33, enter, and all of the Xbox ones at the bottom here, so 34, 35, and that's really it here. If you use an external GPU, you may want to keep this one here. If you need Smart Screen, you can turn this on as well, which is the click yes to run as admin. You may want this. I don't use anything else here, but you have Skype, Parental Controls, People Bar, OneDrive, Narrator, Edge Developer Tools for the classic browser up here, Barcode Scanner, Azure, etc. I don't need anything here, so I'll hit X to go back, 
and enter. Then Windows apps and you can see a lot of things here are already disabled. This is all up to your preference, though do note that everything listed as Xbox app is required for playing games through the Microsoft Store or Xbox app, especially for Game Pass. So I'll start by turning off things I don't need. I don't use the alarm clock, so 01. App installer, I'll need to keep. Calculator, I use. Camera, I don't, so 04. Cortana, so 05. Enter, though do note that uninstalling Cortana at any place could cause Windows Search to stop working, or at least it did previously. I'll leave this off for now. Feedback Hub, 06, enter. Film and TV, 07, enter. And I'll be turning back on the gaming app over here. So 08, enter. I'll turn off Get Help, 09. I'll leave Google VP9 on. Groove Music, 11, off. HEIF plugin, I'll leave on. Maps, I'll leave off. My Office, 14, I'll turn off. News, I'll turn off as well. So 14 and 15. Notepad, I'll leave on. Paint, I'll leave on. People, I'll turn off. Photos, I'll turn off as well, as I use the default Windows Photo Viewer. Power Automate Desktop is not one that I've heard before, but apparently it allows you to easily automate from your desktop. I don't have any experience with this, but it might be something you want to use. So I'll leave this on for now. Screen Sketch, I'll leave on. Solitaire off. Sticky Notes off. Store Experience Host, I'll turn on, as you may need it for the Windows Store. Terminal, I'll leave on. Tips, I'll turn off. To Do's, I'll turn off as well. Voice recorder, weather, web media I'll leave on, web P I'll leave on, widgets I'll turn off, Windows Mail I'll leave there, Windows Store app I'll leave on, and all of the Xbox ones down at the bottom here, I'll turn them all on as well. So 35, 36, 37, 38, and 39. Finally, your phone 40 I'll turn off. This of course depends on what you're going to be doing with your computer, and some of these you aren't really able to install later on, so do be careful with what you pick. Then I'll hit X to go back and enter. Now that we've gone through absolutely everything here, I'll hit X to go back once again, and now we can hit 2 to start removing Windows components. This will run through the install file and remove things that we selected earlier. When it's done, press any key to continue, and X to go back once again. Then back once again, and we're on the main menu. Press apply and choose apply and save changes to source images. Then when asked if you want to clean up, hit no and wait for this to recompile. Press any key to continue. Then press six for target and choose one for make a DVD ISO image. Now you can enter a volume label. It doesn't really matter. I'll call it install and an ISO file name. I'll call it win 11. I'll hit enter. Now it's compiling the ISO file. Press any key to continue and X to close it. Spacebar, any key. And now if we head into the ISO folder, you'll see the file we just created here, win11.iso. This is our customized and stripped down, debloated Windows 11 install or Windows 11 Lite. All you have to do is use a program like Rufus to burn this onto a USB and you can install it on a computer. Or if you're using a virtual machine, you can simply mount it and install it that way. Because I'm going to be burning it to a physical USB, I'll be downloading a program called Rufus. In the description down below, you'll find this website here. Scroll down and click the download over here and open the file when it's done downloading. Once you put a USB in your computer, you can select it from the drop down here and click select on the right hand side here. Navigate across to the correct folder with the Windows 11 custom ISO in it, select it and it should expand as such. Now we can choose image option. You can leave it as TPM plus secure boot or you can remove the TPM requirement over here. It's super simple. I'll leave it as TPM 2.0 plus secure boot as my laptop does have a TPM chip, but you can skip it by selecting this option here. Finally, leave everything else as is. You can change the volume label here if you'd like. As we did set it earlier, you can ignore it. It doesn't really matter. It's just the name of your USB. So after double checking your drive is empty, simply click start over here and wait for it to burn to the USB. Click OK. And that's about it. When it's done, you can put it into a laptop or a computer, reboot it, choose to boot from the drive and install Windows as you'd hoped. There's really nothing else to it. But anyways, that's about it for this video. It's been super long, but of course it's very useful if you'd like to install Windows 11 without any bloatware to begin with. If you'd like to get even more off of your computer, customize it to be a lot safer, send a lot less telemetry to Microsoft, etc. In the description down below, you'll find a link to O and O Shut Up 10 Plus Plus, which also works for Windows 11. It lets you customize telemetry, etc, etc, and choose what you'd like to happen where. There are of course other tools, which if I do get around to doing guides for, including O and O, you'll find it in the description down below. Of course, this isn't the only tool, and I'm not telling you to use it, as it does get super in-depth. This is pretty good for now, but of course, if you'd like to go further, you can. But anyways, that's really about it for this video. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Technobay here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.